Hello everybody, welcome back to Lotus PC and welcome back to our War in the Pacific play by email game. Uh, so we're getting straight back into it as last time. Uh, first little thing that pops up is our occupation of Naga, which is just a little bit up from where we've done a secondary landing uh, on the southern Philippines, in well, the main island of the Philippines, uh, in Luzon. Um, we also are getting some attacks by American submarines. This is something that's been happening a little bit, um, and I can see what Invictus is trying to do. He's trying to harass my ships uh, as they are doing their offloading and their landing. But as we can see, this sub does take some damage, and we'll see in a moment uh, that it takes a couple of hits. Would it be enough to sink it? Maybe not. Um, you know, Manila is still fairly safe. Um, so if it's not too damaged, he might be able to get that back to Manila and repaired in time, or at least get it back to Manila and get it repaired enough to maybe send it elsewhere. Um, so, you know, it's probably not dead, <clears throat> but we'll see how it goes. Elsewhere, we're carrying on our landing on Guam, um, and we skip through that because it's just bombardment. Nothing too exciting happens with that bombardment either. And yeah, a few other things. It's going to say it's going to do some naval movement, but also some aircraft. But because we're not flying any aircraft at night, and seemingly Invictus isn't either, uh, not a lot happens on the night combat. Although something that is important that I did forget to think about was this. Uh, so this is the USS Sea Dragon. It's harassing our kind of transports that are moving resources out of China into Japan. Uh, and it hits once, misses the first time, hits the second time with no explosion. Um, and that's two separate attacks. Now, as f you know, I'm thinking, do I have anything there? And given the fact that it has been attacked twice with no patrol craft or no sub chasers, does make me think maybe there is. Now, the captain of the Sea Dragon, uh, this WC Feral, decides, you know what would be a good idea is to attack with my main gun. However, the moment it does that, one of our transport ships then hits it. But again, this, this is now the Swordfish. So there's a couple of submarines up there that we need to clear out. So what we're gonna do, one of the first things we'll do when we get our control is we will send some uh, patrol boats just to keep an eye on this area, you know. Um, we wanna make sure that if, you know, there is submarines there, either we put damage on them and scare them away, or more significantly, maybe actually sink the ships, but we'll wait and see uh, what happens there. So we're doing the end of the 12 hour phase, things come back to normal, and now it's the morning. So Coast Watchers and Naval Reaction, nothing again too exciting happening at the moment. And we do attempt, one of our submarines uh, near America does attempt to shoot at something, and then we notice that there is an oiler and a tanker here. So this is something intriguing. Uh, we'll see if we can find anything out there. Again, the I-26, one of our subs that has been harassing the Americans around Pearl Harbor is getting attacked by American destroyers, but not too much seems to be happening there either. So we're doing okay, but it probably is only a matter of time. A couple of other task forces merging together, the escorts merging with the ships that we sent them to go for yesterday, so that's all good. And yeah, elsewhere we are, you know, just watching what our escorts and our scouts are finding. Mixed messages, as always, with the Japanese, um, but nothing jumping out of us at the moment um, that we need to suddenly go and deal with. So we'll wait for this to do its usual recon. There is the Ryuyu being uh, spotted by Allied Scout planes, uh, which makes me feel a little bit nervous, um, but doesn't really come to anything. So, now this is why we changed our zeros yesterday. So these are our Betty's flying from Takeo, and they are being escorted by zeros from Takeo. And we can see that the Americans do have quite a few aircraft trying to face us, some P-40s, some P-35s, and P-26s. Um, generally, it's not going, you know, it's going our way mostly in regards to the dogfight, but it doesn't seem that we are actually destroying any enemy aircraft that quickly, which is always a bit of a nightmare. And more and more P-25s and P-40s are turning up, 
which is even worse. You know, we want to try and get through these um, and clear them out so that they don't get to our bombers because at the moment our industrial you know, capacity on the bombers is not super high and we are on the offensive. So, you know, we need these bombers to stay alive, stay relatively undamaged if we can help it and kind of push them towards where we need to go. However, bad news, they skip past the zeros uh, and quite a lot of Warhawks and P-35s get into the Betty bombers and as you can see here, we are taking quite heavy casualties, uh, which is really not good. In fact, to give a little bit of a spoiler, this entire flight so seven betty bombers are completely destroyed or you know retreat from the battle so yeah really really not good for us in this situation so we skip through there we have a look at our losses we see we shoot down a few american planes but the loss of those bettys is pretty rough now we skip through that one quite quickly, much better. Um, according to that, we lost one Betty, which we think was over Clark Field, but not too bad elsewhere. But then Nels turn up without an escort, which worries me. We lose a couple, but mostly they manage to get through, so it's not the end of the world. Back in Malaya, Sally's bombarding um, and causing some casualties, which is good. The follow-ups coming in in the runway. Not doing loads and loads of damage. Two hits on the runway, not loads, and some bombing runs in China uh, throughout, uh, just causing the occasional you know, casualties on the Chinese forces. Bombardment and bombing of Hong Kong, which is all good, something we want to do, um, and again a few casualties, and this time a bombing of Georgetown. Uh, runway hits, but not really much damage. Quite a few lilies here, 30 lilies attacking uh, some troops. But no damage. Um, the 8th Indian Brigade and the retreating troops from uh, Kota Baru, but yeah, no real damage. And even more Sally attacks elsewhere and light casualty damage. It's always one thing that has kind of, you know, bugged me about this game at times is it does seem that the casualty damage is relatively low. Now, it could be me not using my aircraft properly, which is very much the case. We will do a bit of testing later or maybe even take a bit of a risk later with some of our bombers. Uh, and here we see the Chinese bombers trying to uh, get out and be offensive. And in fact, they're actually attacking near Ishang. Now, last turn, we kind of allowed Ishang to be an open city, retreated from it to cross this other river, just to try and cover ourselves. Now, the ships that attacked the transport ships last time, uh, sorry, the planes that attacked the transport ships last time, these Nels are doing some more attacking, but I'm like, they're still using bombs. Interestingly, we found three British destroyers here. Nothing too exciting, but this is kind of the three destroyers from Hong Kong. Um, and again, you know, any warship we sink is beneficial for us. You know, destroyers are extremely useful in the fact that they can kind of harass our uh, submarines. And ideally, once we capture Singapore, then we will be able to move uh, towards attacking um, you know, the shipping lanes around Sri Lanka and around Bengal as well. Uh, something that popped up in the middle of there was the AK Sydney Maru sunk. Um, and I don't even know where the AK Sydney Maru was hit. I think it might have been last turn uh, by some torpedoes, um, but it definitely wasn't this turn. So again, just a few kind of spots, and this is the a the um, afternoon. But what we noticed is that the weather is so bad, uh, particularly over many of our targets, that there was no attacks at all uh, by our aircraft in the afternoon. Not from the Allied either, um, and that included on China. So yeah, pretty rough. Um, we do have a landing at San Fernandino, which is slightly lower down on Luzon. Again, just trying to skip slightly forward. That is a pre you know, meditated uh, attack by the AI. It was already set up, so nothing we did as such, but it is moving troops forward. Some combat near Nanchang. Now, this is where it would seem that we've been attacked at Nanchang, and then this is our deliberate attack at Pengpu, uh, where we, you know, bombarded last time to see what was there, and pretty heavy casualties. Most important thing that we're doing here is now bombarding Hong Kong with our big guns. 
um, where you can have a look at how it's going. And we do suffer some casualties, but so do the allies. So I'm not too worried as such. We will see how it kind of progresses and goes forward from there. And we attack Guam and we successfully deal with the US base Hello, force there and we get of the Pacific. This is your favorite enemy Orphan Anne at Radio Tokyo with music to lift your spirits and words to depress your morale. Our very first, first Imperial General Tokyo announced today that the ever victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Guam. So with that, we have the end of the day, and we are going to kind of deal with a few of the issues that we noticed in the middle of that combat turn, uh, particularly in regards to the Shanghai to Japan slot. But first, I am a bit worried about the Nels. So I initially decided to stand them down, but then I think, hmm, actually, no, ground attack would be useful. Let's set them to 8,000 feet. But instead of attacking the Philippines, why don't we attack somewhere else? And I was thinking Hong Kong, and then I was kind of like, mm, Hong Kong will have a lot of AA, so it's going to be a risk. But Nanshang, if you know Invictus is indeed attacking us on in Nanshang, let's hit him back. Um, we go through, we check that our Nels are also doing that, and then we click through every single thing. We realize we've got some lilies here uh, that are currently trying to attack Clark Field. So again, we change their target. We get them to attack Hong Kong, which some other lilies have been doing as well. Um, and we drop them down to 10,000 feet uh, and actually 8,000 feet. So these will kind of be our test beds to see how badly Allied AA will, or what damage Allied AA will do to us once we've dropped it down. Uh, Sally's, we also realize are currently going to Clark Field. We're gonna drop those down to 8,000 feet as well. And we're also going to send them at Nanshan because we don't think the Chinese have too much AA. So we're going to send a lot of our twin engine bombers just to give it a good old bombing run, uh, maybe tomorrow. Just to kind of give us a bit of a test and an understanding to see exactly how much damage we can do at 8,000. Because this is a number that I've been seeing. Um, but also kind of see how badly we will be affected by any AA there. Um, so that's those sorted. And now I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure there's another lot of Betty Bombers, and there is. So, yeah, we will set those uh, to Nanshang and make sure all Betty Bombers are following that order. Meanwhile, in Apari, we just want to double check that these guys are on sweep, which they are. Um, sweeping over Clark Field. We're going to take cap down by 10% just to make sure. And also drop the altitude they were flying. They were kind of flying at 25, uh, 23,000 feet. I have a quick look here at the uh, maneuverability and altitude, so drop it down even more to 13,000, where they'll be at their most maneuverable. So with Apari, I just checked the aviation support. We realized it's a little bit low, and I was kind of thinking, hmm, I thought there was more troops there, but whatever. Um, we kind of have a look at what we've got at San Fernandino, and it's mostly our armored units. There is some infantry there as well, so we get these to deliberately attack if they can to capture this base, and we just make sure that the units in Hong Kong are still bombarding because that's the last thing we want. You know, we don't want them to stop fighting. And Nanshang, again, we will cancel the expansion of the airfield and we'll get them to up their fortifications. I was debating whether or not to leave it at four, but we'll get them to kind of dig in even more. The Chinese want this, the Chinese are gonna pay for it. I have a look at the troops we've got, nothing super spectacular. It's mostly Chinese collaboration units. Um, but, you know, we will hold, and I'm kind of having a look at how our progress is going in the north. We are waiting on the 6th Army, which we have moved from Manchuria to come down here, uh, and most of it is here. We also set up a deliberate attack for units that are trying to escape across the river. If they want to get out of here, they're going to get out of here by paying with their blood, so we'll make sure how that's going. But all the other units we have planned moving are going well. So, now, I have a look for seeing what we can do in regards to getting rid of some uh, American destroyers. Now, I don't want to launch just a single destroyer. I have a look, there is patrol crafts, and then I realize, oh, they haven't got any anti-submarine, never mind. So we go over to Nagasaki uh, Seibo, and we go, there's some patrol boats here, so we'll use those. So we go to anti-submarine combat eventually, and then we click the three patrol boats, which do have quite a bit of range, 
um, and a couple of them are a little bit slow, but it'll be fine. Um, and we set patrol zone, boundary one, just outside of Shanghai, and then boundary two, just a little bit south of Nagasaki, and we will then give them a little bit of react, just so that then if they find any American submarines, they can then hit it and ping it. And then we're kind of looking around, to see if there's any other patrol boats in the area. Um, we're also just checking what ships we've got in Port Arthur, and then we see that we have our cargo ships moving resources from Manchuria, that coal and iron that is so significant to the Japanese war machine moving from Manchuria. So, with that underway, we keep an eye on what is going on in uh, Leg of Spy. Again, probably terrible pronunciation. And just check if all of the units are off the boat yet, which they are not. Um, so, we are not going to send them up just yet. We'll wait for them all to get off at once and then move up. Although, now I'm thinking about it, I should have done because they would have still got units coming off. And then I'll just have a look at these kind of task forces and wondering these ones that we spotted last time. Um, the carriers are going to need to move because what we realize is this task force down here is moving to the southeast. Again, not sure what this task force is. We don't have much information on it, but it is moving to the southeast. So we'll see what we can find and see if we can grab it. Meanwhile, all the ships moving to truck are there, and we realize that these are all named invasions on New Guinea. And then this one, Lombrum, which in a moment I'm going to try and look for and really struggle to find. Uh, I have a submarine here, and I'm about to skip by it, and I go, oh, it's on computer control, which I did accidentally put as the options for beginning this game, which, you know, my mistake, but we all make them. Um, and I go to set this in the most weird position at first. I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I'll stick it in the middle of the Coral Sea. Second boundary, and now I'm like, uh, um, uh, um... No, this would. What What am I doing? And I go back and realize actually, if I want to blockade Port Moresby or something, let me put one closer. Now, I say blockade. Um, it probably isn't going to be a blockade, but again, Port Moresby needs supplies from the mainland of Australia. So if we can make sure that we've got a submarine kind of moving around, there's a high chance we might sink something. Again, I check the amphibious forces and just see where they're all going. Realize that most of them are in New Guinea. So reading down, you know, we've got Wawak, Antabe, Shortlands, and then Lombrum. And I'm like, where's Lombrum? No idea. Now, I don't use the base search for this, you know, because I'm thinking, oh, I'll find it in a minute. There's no point firing up the base search, but I, I do not find it at all. Um, so if a commenter could be so useful as to tell me where Lombrum is, that'll be very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, no idea, go back and I think, oh, um, well, maybe it's in the north of New Guinea, or, well, what would be the, uh, west of Dutch New Guinea. Um, I check the Molaccas Islands, nothing, can't find it, no idea. So, again, if, uh, anybody would be so kind as to let me know where that is, I'd be very, very grateful. Um, so yeah, so we kind of leave those there, because what I want to check is I want to see what units we've got for landing on Rabul. Uh, Rabul is kind of a key objective for mine. Um, and then I realize we don't really have many units there at the moment, so I'm gonna go check other places. And what I wanna do is I wanna move the 144th Infantry Regiment. Um, it's quite a significant force. That combined with a couple of uh, you know, Japanese Marine SN SNLFs should be enough to take Rabul. There is a decent force there, and obviously depending on what Invictus does, he might try and reinforce it. So we've got to be relatively quick. I don't want to hang around uh, with Rebels, so we will sort something out with that very, very soon, as well as a bombardment force. Uh, but if we get that secure, and then secure the rest of New Britain, it means then we have a really, really solid location that you know we can launch all sorts from, whether that be Betty Bombers to harass Port Moresby and the Coral Sea, you know, launch troops from there and invasions, you know, load supplies there. So it, it will be our kind of jumping off point for you know, expansion into the Coral Sea. Uh, so we do need to be on it relatively quickly. And we send a couple of patrol boats from Saipan uh, on a bit of a mission around. Although, I think these guys were supposed to initially go and escort 
the transport ships. Um, but we'll see how that goes, and I will double check that the next time I get the turn, if I remember. So we look at the uh, another major base at uh, Babel Daub. Um, and we kind of have a look what is planning to go elsewhere and we realize that there is some stuff that is planned for the southern island of uh, the Philippines uh, Mindanao but I'm kind of a bit dubious about sending them just yet we also see there's some 16th army there as well which are meant for Singapore but again due to the fact we haven't really got this area cleared yet I'm not particularly keen on sending them just yet It'll be something that will happen. Um, but yeah, as mentioning, I'm not overtly keen sending limited troops into Mindano. Uh, just because I have a feeling that something bad might happen. Or it would just become a bit of a slog. So I'll need to have a look and find something else uh, to see what is there. So we are going to set up a short uh, transport here from Samar. Uh, to move the troops that are meant to be from uh, or meant to go to Cotabaru and Malaya um, so I have a look and I go oh I'll do it via troop first and I just start putting units in um, and then I realize oh wait these are in a task force I don't want these so I take off the in task force filter or put it on rather um, and then go back and look for the ships that are not in task forces um, so that we don't end up using other ships that are planned to go elsewhere and have problems. So we're going to go through and move these units, most of which are either AA or construction units, so nothing exciting. It's not like a new invasion or anything like that. It's just some units that we want to make sure are being moved um, so they're in their right place and just kind of backing things up. Um, I look around, nothing else needs to go, uh, although for some reason I was about to move a... Um, AA unit, but instead we'll move the uh, RF gun battalion. So, yeah, all fine. Oh, there is some artillery actually. There was some independent mountain guns in there. I forgot those. So, they'll move down to there, and I'm going to find some escorts for them. And there's a couple of patrol boats there. They are currently escorting in the South China Sea, but for the time being, they are going to escort task force. 214, and I'm pretty sure it's Task Force 214 after I have a look, um, because 240 was the one that is going elsewhere, and we took ships from by accident, um, and the other two are amphibious, so we think it is indeed 214. Um, elsewhere, we can have a look and see what's going on, and there's this Task Force that's kind of been hanging off of uh, Quantan, and I, I have a feeling that there's something there and I believe that maybe what is happening is Invictus is expecting me to do what is known as the uh, Mersing Gambit, which is you land troops in Mersing and basically try to cut off a load of troops heading to Singapore. There's a part of me that wants to do that, but I feel like Invictus might have done it to others. He's much more experienced in this than I am. Um, so he kind of is expecting it. And, you know, the first rule of warfare is don't do what your enemy is expecting you to do. Um, I know that might mean it takes longer to take Malaya and it's going to be a bit of a slog to get through, but I don't know. It just feels a bit, you know, too much of a risk for me. Elsewhere, we are setting up a short little convoy to Cotabaru to make sure we've got supplies. Only some light cargo ships, nothing too significant. No escort either. I'm not too worried if we lose those. And just before that, we set up made sure that our nails that were dropping bombs were using torpedoes so that they can harass any more ships. Uh, elsewhere, we are moving troops from Canton, kind of pushing them up into China proper. So we've got a whole division here uh, that we are moving, the 104th Division, and we're getting all the other units there to follow them, which is a mortar battalion and the 26th Army HQ. Um, and we realize what we've got going on in Nanshang. That's fine. Um, and we're going to continue moving the 12th independent mixed brigade across the river to follow the units that they beat now what i've noticed there is that invictus is moving some infantry almost maybe to cover or to counterattack, and i'm kind of thinking mm, okay fine you do that 
Um, we're going to move a collaboration unit into Peng Pu, which is what we took, just to make sure it has its garrison requirements. And then we realize there's a whole division, the 15th division, moving up. So if Invictus does want to try and recapture Peng Pu, he's going to be in for a bit of a shock, because there's going to be 15,000 Japanese troops waiting for him. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Elsewhere, I'm just kind of having a look around, thinking... Okay, what next? What is the next thing that we need to make sure that we're sorting? And I'm looking around, I'm double checking my ships, I've got the Guam stuff there. Yeah, all good, all good, all good. And I'm thinking, ah, there was a division, the second division that I wanted to move. And then I have a look, the 4th Infantry Division, and I'm thinking, okay, Task Force 2124, 142, which is that then? So we go over here, we have a look at some of these infantry regiments. Make up of the 2nd Battalion, 124, where are these going? Then I realise this is the group that is going to attack Ku Ching. So I follow the line and find that Ku Ching is the other base in Sarawak. And I'm thinking, mm, do I move them? And I'm going to leave them and let them kind of go as they are. Um, I might give them some reinforcements and try and capture northern Borneo, get some construction units over there and maybe get some uh, patrol boats to make sure that area is clear. We have a look through the signal intelligence, nothing exciting. We have a look through op report, nothing exciting. So last thing we'll check before we finish, that will be the uh, weather report just to see if it's still bad weather tomorrow. Looks fine apart from in the very north, which we're not too worried about. And yeah, that's going to be it for today. So that is turn six. Thank you very much, everyone for joining us. As mentioned, if you've been liking these videos, do please like them. Uh, come join us on the Discord. The link is down below. And I will also link Invictus's channel. I don't go and watch any of those videos because that's completely unfair. And I'm hoping that Invictus is also doing the same thing. Uh, but I will put a link to his channel. So if you want to go see the other side of this, he has it got you know from day one onwards. So from the attack on Pearl Harbor onwards. Um, so go, go check that out. Go say I said hi. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye.